everybody, how are you? Welcome to Conversations with Paola. You know, when we come to the beaches here in South Florida, it seems like all we're seeing is sargasm. Well, it turns out it is sargasm season, and I keep getting a lot of questions about the sargasm. Why is there so much? What is it all about? And so today on Conversations with Paola, I thought I would help you all answer some of those questions and give you a little insight into what is up with all this sargasm. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Paola Espitia with Olapai Creative. Welcome to Conversations with Paola, a weekly video series exploring what it takes to make change. We share unfiltered, intimate, and inspiring conversations with wave makers in blue spaces around the world. Our mission is to create a ripple effect that moves you to affect change in your lives and communities too. 70% of, of the surface of planet Earth is covered in water. Also, um, our brain, our heart, and our lungs consist of 70% of water. That's the epitome of what the ocean is to me. It's just like my heart and soul and it's love and it's connection. It was something that, that was going to stick with him for quite a while. I mean, read lots of books. Books will motivate you. Experience things. Experiences will motivate you. Watch interviews like this. But I have to say, being able to go out and make an impact. How many people do you interact with every day? You can be a change maker for all of those people. Now it's time for us to say, okay, everybody's had their chance. Now it's time to say, we're ready. We're going to kick it off and we're going to start making our beach the most environmentally friendly. The faster you're going to fall in love with water, the longer and happier you're going to leave. And we, we love so water! We love you! <laughs> Thank you! So sargasm is actually a type of brown algae. We call it sargasm seaweed because we originally thought it came from the Sargasso Sea in the middle of the Atlantic. But it just so turns out that that happens to be a place where there's a lot of gyres and currents that bring all of this seaweed together in one spot. The seaweed never actually hits bottom. It never actually grows from the bottom and instead it's a free floating seaweed. And so that's why when you pick it up and you look at it up close, you'll see all of these little tiny balls on the seaweed. Those are its flotation devices. They help the seaweed stay afloat. Now, just like with all algae, this particular seaweed, the sargasm, also needs the sun to be able to photosynthesize. And so those little tiny balls help to keep it afloat so that it can access the sunlight. Another neat thing is that when you actually pick up the sargasm or when you swim right through it, <laughs> you can feel that it's very rough, maybe a little bit prickly, but it has a very tough texture. And that's because, like I said, this is a free floating seaweed and so it's perfectly adapted to handle those rough conditions when it's out in the open ocean. It seems like it's a big nuisance and when it's in a big patch that we're seeing right now on our beaches, it can be a problem. But really, it's actually habitat for all kinds of different critters. As a matter of fact, sea turtles, baby sea turtles, when they first swim out to sea, they're looking for these big patches of sargasm seaweed under which to hang out. Another really neat thing is that um, fishermen will oftentimes refer to the long lines of sargasm that you see out there free floating. They'll refer to those long lines as the weed line. And so fishermen have a keen eye for where to look, where they might find fish, because of course, if there's little baby sea turtles hanging out under the sargasm, that means there's probably bigger fish that are targeting the baby sea turtles, which means that fishermen, those are after the fish that are eating the baby sea turtles. So see, it's all connected. Sargasm also provides habitat for all kinds of juvenile fish and even shrimp. And the neat thing about these critters is that they are perfectly adapted to actually match and camouflage within the sargasm. And so here's a neat thing that you can do next time you're at the beach and you're in the ocean, just go ahead and grab a big patch of that sargasm seaweed, shake it out in your hand, and you'll start to feel and see all of the critters that fall out of the seaweed. I'm talking little baby shrimp, little kind of krill-like critters, a juvenile fish, sometimes even a seahorse. And it's so neat, again, when you see these animals, they look exactly like the sargasm in color and texture and even in, in the same pattern. So try that little trick out next time you're out there swimming in the ocean. 
So right now, we are seeing an overabundance of this sargasm on our beaches. And I'm sure if you're either a swimmer, a boater, a diver, you have definitely noticed that this is impacting our waterways. When there's so much seaweed on the beaches, we see all kinds of effects that happen. So for instance, number one, it's just really a pain in the butt to swim through when you're out there swimming in the ocean. It can also get caught up in your boat propellers. It can be hard to paddle through. But also on the critter side, we see that when there's so much of it, baby sea turtles actually have a difficult time traversing over these big patches of sargasm left over on the beach. And it makes it difficult for them to get to their nest, from their nest to the ocean. We also see that so much sargasm blocks out the sunlight for corals that live there on the bottom. Of course, corals also have a photosynthesizing algae within their cells, and so they too need the sunlight. But when there's so much sargasm, it actually blocks out the light. Another thing that we see is that with all of the sargasm on the beaches, it's actually having an impact on tourism. In the Caribbean last year, there were actually a few islands that had to close down some of their resorts altogether because there was just so much sargasm on the beaches. Now, there's a lot of reasons why we're seeing this, and in particular, we're actually seeing more sargasm within the last seven years than we ever have before. This can all be traced back to actually two reasons. The first reason is climate change. With climate change, we see an increase in our sea surface temperatures, which promote really perfect conditions for the blooming of algae, including sargasm. So with the warming of our sea surface temperatures, we see these sargasm blooms. The other thing that we see is actually a lot of nutrient input from land-based agriculture in the form of fertilizer. Fertilizer is doing its job and it's helping all of this seaweed bloom now out of control. An interesting thing is that, like I said, the sargasm actually travels throughout the Caribbean riding the currents. And so that's why we see it coming up on shore here in Fort Lauderdale and South Florida, especially when we have easterly winds blowing all of those waves inshore. But interestingly, in the Amazon River Basin, there has been a huge amount of deforestation and they've been clearing out all of that land for agriculture. Of course, with the agriculture, there comes a lot of fertilizer and a lot of treatment to the soil. And so during heavy rains, all of that is running into the Amazon River Basin, emptying out into the ocean just off of Brazil. And that excess fertilizer is actually causing major sargasm blooms downstream from us. So by the time it hits the currents and ends up getting into the Gulf Stream here in South Florida, that's when we get a big impact. So it's not just our local input of fertilizer coming from land-based sources like our yards, but it's also coming from, a, on a bigger scale, the Amazon River Basin. So it just goes to show that everything really is connected. So I know you're thinking that you're now gonna have to always live with this sargasm season every summer here in South Florida but there's actually some things that we can do locally to help manage the sargasm as well as perhaps in the future help prevent it from coming in in such large quantities. Now on a local level, we can always plant native gardens. You see, native gardens take less water and less fertilizer and they also help to promote all kinds of additional critters back to South Florida, including bees, butterflies, and birds. We're actually a really big migratory bird zone. So just by planting native plants that are well adapted to living in our Florida conditions, you get to minimize the, no the amount of water that you're using, which saves money. You also get to minimize the amount of fertilizer that you're using. And this is especially important for those of you who live canal side because that's even easier access to the waterways, but they're also very low maintenance, very hardy, and still really beautiful. So I encourage you all to check out Florida's extension program for understanding what kinds of plants are native plants and what, what plants are better choice when planting your native garden. Another thing that can be done on a city level is that instead of pulling up all of that sargasm and shoveling it into dump trucks and then taking it out to landfills, which is currently being done, you can actually repurpose the sargasm seaweed. 
You see, sargasm makes a really good holding material to recreate and to reconstruct sand dunes. And sand dunes on our beaches are actually really important because they also hold on to the sands and they also help to prevent any kind of big waves during our hurricane season to pull out our sand. And those sand dunes are actually helping to protect our shorelines. So by using the sargasm to rebuild sand dunes and to rebuild our beaches, that's a really great repurposing effort you can do for the seaweed. Another thing that can be done is that sargasm can actually be used as a fertilizer and a compost material. Now, you just have to uh, rinse the sargasm free of all of the salts and then let it dry for a little while and then you can actually plant it in that native garden that you have in your yard or how about this this would be such a neat a neat thing to, to see happen here in Fort Lauderdale but I totally envision us being able to repurpose that sargasm by collecting it processing it by removing the salt letting it dry and then planting it in an area where we can create a citywide composting program whereby we can then be disposing our bioplastics that all of the hotels and restaurants here are going to switch to because we're going to become a more sustainable city here in Fort Lauderdale, right? So this is what I envision is several different ways that we could actually repurpose that sargasm, use it to continue the line of thinking more about renewable, thinking about repurposing and turning Fort Lauderdale and South Florida into a sustainable city. So. There's so much you can do with sargasm. It's actually not a wasted seaweed. Well, I thank you so much for joining us today on Conversations with Paola. I hope you learned a lot about seaweed, probably a lot more than you ever thought you would know about sargasm, all of that brown algae that's washing up on, onto our beaches. And you know what? I invite you all to be wave makers. That's what we're all about here, is inspiring you to do something that will help our backyard become a better bluer version of itself so if you're interested in becoming a wave maker i invite you to join us on facebook in our blue minds group of south florida we meet every month for a waterfront happy hour and it's a really great way to get a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one, to meet other people in in our community that are doing something about our waterways or who are concerned about our waterways and really just have a great time with some really fun people because i'll tell you water people are the best kind of people to hang out with <laughs> So I look forward for you all to joining us in that Blue Mind group of South Florida. I can't wait to meet you at one of those happy hours. And until next time, remember, you too can make a difference and be a wave maker. So with that, thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time on Conversations with Paola.